Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our Sandy and Royal Blue special for the Battle Fever podcast. Um, today I'm joined by, and it's probably fitting actually that you're here because the two years went on the march that Sandy Hi. was part of. So the day I'm joined by Wally, who's one of my uh, good pals, best pal for years, and we're going to discuss Sandy's playing career, which I think is probably one of the most exciting ones that I've had the pleasure of doing because who it is, it's Sandy Jarman at the end of the day. Definitely, and thanks for inviting me along to do it, big man. It was actually, it was just just doing the, the research for it itself was really fun. And Aye. getting to watch, looking on YouTube, looking at a couple of wee books and that I've got and just seeing different things about the, the man himself. And Aye. still being surprised by it, even though you've heard so much stuff over the years. Aye. Aye. We know him, obviously, Sandy, but... William Puller Jarden was his name. Get called Sandy Duty, the colour of his hair, I think it was. Um, so, well, so, the, just the thing, I've actually, one of the things I was reading, apparently it was the Ibrox trainer and physiotherapist, David Kinnear, that said because he's running motion, that it was like some, it reminded of someone running through sand. But I've always heard the hair. There you go. I've always heard the hair thing. So, I don't know, a, a couple of bears can maybe. Confirm uh, that whatever it is. That's brilliant, though. The fact that there's two hangs to that. That's brilliant. That's that's. I never, I never seen that. Aye. Uh, he obviously, I think I watched a thing with Sandy the other day there, and he said himself that including Scotland games, including friendlies, etc., he, he estimated that he played around 1,120 games. Now, if you've kind of looked a wee bit of the stats, you might be able to back that up. But Sandy kind of gave a rough guesstimate on that. There was 1,120 yeah. games. That for a football player is frightening when you think of the, the amount of games that he's played. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's like, it's just looking, it's again, looking through all the, the, the stuff and that, and you're seeing like all the cup finals and that that he played in. At the cup finals, they were all the finals that we had in that time. Never yeah. missed them. Never, I mean, I think you'd have read as well about the, it was the the spell for I think it was seventy two to seventy five, one hundred and seventy one consecutive matches he played as well, and it's just it's it's phenomenal. It's it's we'll get into it obviously, but it's it's just it's it's clear to see why he's regarded the way he is. Well, I said to I said to Jim Arnham, and when I spoke to him, he was obviously his great pal, and I said to him that at Rangers we've had many great players, but I think Sandy's in a bracket where we've got a few great Rangers really through the, the years. And Sandy epitomises everything that that stands for, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, obviously we, we said he joined he joined Rangers in 1965. We think, no, you might be able to back it up, but I, I can't find it. But I think his dad was actually a Rangers supporter. 
right? Because he was Hearts, obviously, born through in Edinburgh, stone throw away for Tyne Castle. Sandy said himself that he thought he was going to be a joiner like his brother, or he was going to be playing for Hearts if it was football because it was his local team. But his dad actually says to him, we're going along, we're going, you're signing for, for Rangers. Well, I didn't actually know that, so that's, that's news to me. I knew he was a heart supporter. Um, um, but it's just, I would, I would be, I don't know if you know anywhere about how I actually got around to it ending up being Rangers. Maybe it was just a case of just going through to Glasgow and, and whatever else might have happened. But it's interesting that as well. He it, it, it does say, he said he sell that when he, walks, he walked in, you see it was a proper football club and... That's that was that. He just, I think Sandy was just taken away with that, and, and, and that was it. But 1965, signed for Rangers. Yeah. Played under Scott Simon, I think it was. I think it was the manager then, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. And uh, although, as you would have seen as well, I, I think it was, it was a, two, three years before he got his debut. Yeah. Uh, which would have been under, that would have been under Scott Simon, aye. Aye. Scott Simon, I think, was his, was the manager that gave him his debut, obviously, and, and told him you've already broke the first the first rule because he showed up to Ibrox with you know, with the Colin tie on and and things like that, you know. So even early doors, even as a young kid, he was dealt. That's no the way we do it here. That's we, there's a certain way we act, there's a certain way we we behave, and and we show up with Colin tie on and Sandy for then on. I think he says himself actually he never ever entered Ibrox without a shirt and tie on after that, even to the present. Well, sadly, he passed, but even up to then, it just it doesn't it doesn't surprise you. It really doesn't uh, right. when you know the sort of man that he was. But it just shows you how far back standards like that went, and they would have been a lot longer than that as well. Well, you think they guys would have been learning for for Struth then? So obviously, when Willie Waddle and that became we took over, they were learning for Struth. So again, it was just coming for even the, the, the earliest part of our history that that we can. Recall, you know, and well, he signed as a midfielder. We all know him as a, or we don't know him obviously as a football player because we're not old enough, but we know him as a roving fullback basically. But he started as a, as a, he signed as a midfielder and he spent a couple of years in the reserves before making his debut, as you said, in a 5 1 win, funnily enough, against Hearts. What did you have any, did you find any information about that, that game in depth? Or? Uh, I didn't know, um. That was it. That's uh, you'll probably have seen the, the, the same issue, Scott. It's, it's hard to get <laughs> stuff, and as I, as you said about the about our age, it's we've never obviously never seen them. But I seen it was at five one. Uh, I think it was the fourth of February, nineteen sixty seven. Yep. And what struck me was uh, it was actually the week after uh, Berwick Rangers, so you the that disaster. So you don't know, I mean, I don't know, as again, this is where we're hoping some older bears after it can maybe tell us, is it maybe a case of they were looking for some changes after yeah. that game? And that's how he ended up getting his chance when he did, Sandy. But he took it. Well, so he, says he, he says himself, Scott Simon, I think, told him, I think I think the team went up, he said, what, 24, 40 hours or something like that before the game. And he's seen himself on the team and thought, right, Small opportunity, the calamitous result against Berwick Rangers is well documented. So I think he took he took that that opportunity. But you touched upon it. It's what three or f- two or three years after he signed for the club, he made his Aye. he made his debut. So he obviously had went through, and it'd be great for Sandy to still be here and, and tell you the stories of grown up. They took mm-hmm. years, even who he looked up to, who took him under the wing, etc., and and see who had the major influence on uh, at Rangers. But obviously. The week after we said we knocked out the Scottish Cup uh, with Berwick Rangers, he scored his first Rangers goal a few weeks later in uh, 18th of March 1967, league match Aye. against Air United. United. Aye. So he's, he obviously made an instant in, impact and, and of course played against Bayern Munich in the, the Cup oh, final. You could, could, could almost, you could literally say it's like for that, for that uh, game in February 1967, that was him in yeah. 1982. And and it's 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 bonkers, really. It really is. But He's, did you have you seen any footage for that for that Munich Cup final? Uh, I've no, no, I have not. We battered I've them. I've I've, I've 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 I didn't know that at all. We, I mean, we I know, was it did it finish one nothing? I won a hundred beaters, and the goal was a beauty. Their goal was a beauty. Uh, I think it gives our boy at the top, and the boy put it at the goalie. But 
we, I mean, their, their goalie made two or three tremendous saves that, that kept her, you know, Rangers should have been out of sight. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't find a quote, but and I've, I read a few that said that uh, Beckenbauer was raving about him after the game. High praise. Well, I think he was still, I think he was still 18 at the time, which is, there you go. And that is, it shouldn't be forgot, I think he'd have probably looked at it as well, Scott, that season and in the May, he scored an absolute screamer against the Celtic. Did you see it? Have you uh, seen it on YouTube? It's a cracker, man. <laughs> a cracker. He loved and a goal against him. <laughs> and that's, that's three months for his debut, 18-year-old. It's unbelievable. Uh, he, he played, obviously, various positions under, I think, obviously Scott Simon left, and, and Davy White, who was brought in to basically, I think, be groomed by Scott Simon to, to be the next the next manager. Is Scott Simon, you know, gets sacked when we were top of the league. He get, beat. he get beat. I can't remember the game he get beat. Again, looking through some stuff, there's been 101 things I've looked at, but I forgot, but going through, we were sitting top of the league and we get beat in a game. I can't, something tells me it's Hibs, I can't remember, but we get beat. Scott Simon gets sacked and David White get promoted to, to be the manager. And he played, he even played Sandy as a centre forward. I've seen that. I think he scored uh, 11 goals in the 12 games he played up front. Starting the good in the day. <laughs> I want it, honestly, Scott, see the, see the, the thing is, right? I don't know about you, right? But see, when I've been watching, i watching some of the, the, the clips and that. I, I don't know the best way of putting this, but see, when I watch, see, when I, I think I fit my 50, 50, 60 a year ago, it's a lot different. And I, I watched some guys that were at the, the top of their game when I ran about these times, and I, and I think to myself, I, I don't know if they would they would make it because it, it changes it changes your way through through the decades. I don't know if they would make it now, but there are certain guys that day. And honestly, see watching Sandy just the way he carried himself in the park, he could have played now. Honestly, uh, he was just the way I keep I kept, I think I read it three or four times. There was the word elegant, uh, was people describing him, and it, it's true. It really is. Oh, well, he played. As I said, all over the park, I think. He signs a midfielder, played all over the defence, played a centre forward. But I think it was really when Wally Waddle took over as manager that, that Jarden found his, his kind of full-back role. But I also think that coincides with what you were what you're saying there about tactics coming into the game. And I think that's probably the first time when really we, we had, you know, it's a fashionista thing now, I think, tactics were really, if you put 11 good players out in the park, put them in the right position... Surely to God they should be good enough to win the game. Do you know what I mean? Aye. You've got to just be better and want it more than the opposition. I think we get caught up a lot in tactics nowadays. And, and Sandy then found his. And I think, looking back on some of the footage, Sandy's ahead of his time. Because Sandy oh, was I a know, fullback that went it, forward. I attacked fullback, totally. Totally. Uh, you see it so many times. And, uh, there's, and then the, the good thing was he had, he had the best of both. Because there's, there's plenty, for all the limited footage there is, there's plenty of... Um, uh, Doing his job at the at the back as well. Aye. Throwing my bogging in the net, and it's uh, you're totally right. Aye. Just uh, the modern fullback playing in, playing in the late sixties. I just think you just imagine you think of Tavernier the and we talk about Tav how going forward he's bombs forward, puts great deliveries into the box. You see Sandy Jardin doing that. The seventies, <laughs> and you think it's not really that. It's, it's, it's just, I just think he was ahead of his time and. Willie Waddle obviously seen that and encouraged that and I suppose it's great when you've got guys like John Gregg that can cover for you and excellent midfield players that can come in and, and, and cover for you. I suppose your, your teammates really have to be your, your, your back up there but an excellent turn of pace as well. I've read some people say about him that he, he, was, he had an engine obviously up and down all day just constant and when he got the ball and I think the goal is what we're talking about as well and he takes it for his own box against Celtic a couple of one twos all the way through sticks in the back of the net I think it was a cup final. It's a, it's a, I take it you thought about the 79. Yes. The Hybrid Cup final. That, it's a, I don't think I've seen the whole run. Aye. In any footage, which is, which is a gutter because one of the clips I watched, the commentator, I'm not sure who it was, is uh, basically saying that, that's, that's one of the best goals that's ever been scored at, at Hamden. Aye. And then you think to yourself, I mean, we, we know about the goal, it's so definite, but... I was just going to say, but the Cooper's goal steals the final. And sadly, Sandy's goal doesn't get the probably the recognition that it deserves. No, but that just shows you how good a goal it was. But I, and that's, that's before that's, that one's even been scored. But I tell you, listen, 
as a, and again, I keep coming back to limited footage. It wasn't his only crack and goal. Quite a few. But I think he scored at 77. Aye, Brooks. Which is, which is a, a, again, superb record. Aye. He won his first major trophy in 1970, beating Celtic 1-0 in the League Cup final. It's like, it's akin to what I keep saying about this season. The League Cup isn't important. We know that. And in the grand scheme of things, we want to win the league. But really, to get your first trophy under your belt as a Rangers player, look what it done for Sandy. I think you need. I think we need that. And Sandy also got that in 1970 in, in the League Cup final. And really, the, the the unique thing I think about that era was that was the team that kind of took us through the 70s and right. in the early 80s. You know, we won the cup, won the cup, etc. That that team stayed together all the way through. You know, there was right. no rebuilding when we had a poor season, and we did. You know, we, no, we, you, we did. You get right, you get right through. Oh, that was DJ. That was a 16 year old, wasn't it? And yeah. the, the two, uh, Billy and Rainey on that. Um, and then you're thinking, there's, I think, I'm assuming, I mean, I might be wrong, as I say, but I'm sure Dodie would have been playing still then. You've obviously got Greg, DJ, uh, Big McCloy in goals. Oh, sure. And that's just, a, that's just a couple of them I think I have to have in mind. I'm sure it probably that was still with Tommy McLean and all that as well, so you're right. Oh, Bob Steen, Aye. Johnson. Aye. Aye. But that's the it, thing, it doesn't. What what it doesn't take away for the fact is that that Sandy was there for that was him in his third season and he, and he despite Rangers picking up that success because we weren't successful I think when he when he first came in and that he, he still never lost his place in that team. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he worked, worked under five managers, remember, and I, he was never present under five under the five really. So I think I think I read he's he's only the I think he's only the second player he. To have done that at Ibrox, or he's maybe he's either I don't think he's I think I, it might be he's either the only only one to play under five or he's he's one of the first. And again, it's just things like that that, that tell you how much he's rated. Mm-hmm. I mean, five yeah. managers every one of them don't keep don't take you to team. I know. Well, see, in fairness, recent recent years, Rangers players might have had the chance to play under five because we chopped and chased them every time. I was my, that was see when I was reading that, that was my next thought was say uh, of Tavano before I thought maybe, <laughs> I think maybe he already has, but he hasn't. He? Andy Halliday when he went far away from that. I know, <laughs> but okay, it's just I mean that that's and that's that's in it again there. That's testament how long he was there because that's that's uh, that's five managers over. Well, it was what. His first game, nineteen eighty sixty seven eight, the fifteen year, you know. So that's in an era when that's him going. That's his whole career, and nobody's even right up to thirty three. He's, he's kept his he's place in the team until it was really. I think it was really. We'll go into that later, but I think it was his choice really. Aye, aye. Even he did eventually. He's obviously he was never present in our probably Rangers' greatest ever team winning the. The European Cup Winners Cup scoring the incredible goal against Bayern Munich with a left foot, which DJ, I think there's footage of DJ saying he didn't mean it. You know, and how can you say he didn't mean it? You know, it's an absolute worldy man. It's a cracker, man. Absolute <laughs> cracker. And, uh, just uh, for him, probably, I'd imagine it was, it was, it was a wee bit. Of, it was even sweeter because it was against Bayern. You know, they wanted yep. to survive for '67 and getting that chance to. to, to to finally go the whole way this thing. And that year as well was it no of them across the city had Inter as well and Inter put them out to get That's revenge for the sixty seven and we put I am out to get revenge for sixty seven. So That's it, mate. And that that's that just shows you the how Scottish football has changed. <laughs> I I, I'm sure the, the Rangers supporters back then still wanting to want name to go any further than <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but th- th- that game, I think, as well, touching the band game, and I think your papa tells a cracking story about that. Do you know what that game? Uh, oh, I, I, do you know I, I think it might have been that game. I think I know the one you talk about with the, the umbrella. I with the umbrella. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know. I just know it was. It, it, it was saying when it was the. He says about the German. He told me about the German was standing in front of him at the game. No, I don't know the context. Yeah, I might have just, I might have just picked up Ryan, but he, about the guy was complaining because he'd be on Barrera, <laughs> and he, he was he would give him abuse. The, the big German guy just turned around, 
Calmly put the umbrella down, put the wee button in it, and you <laughs> don't know how to do it. <laughs> Genius, this one. Turned back around and started to put the umbrella back up. <laughs> I don't know if it was my part was, part was me, and I say, as I say, I don't, I, I need to find out more after him about it because it doesn't make sense to me that they the, the be a German and they're in, you know, but <laughs> I'd, I'll need to find out. That is probably I'll need to find out. And watching Sandy talk about that, Sandy says that we were, we were counting, you say, I think his words were, you, you hear a team that didn't go out their own half, he says, we didn't go out with rain box. He says they were <laughs> they battered Rangers that night, and I suppose it was sweet revenge for for what happened a few years previous, where we battered them. And far as I'm concerned, and, and they they took it one 0 But obviously, Sandy scored the first two 0 win and sent us on our way to, to Barcelona in '72. And the rest is well, that's it. Third time lucky, and I'm I'm mortalised if he if he didn't he, if he didn't play another game after this, and he played many games after it, as we know, he would have been. Forever immortalised as, as a legend, anyway. Uh-huh. But I think that was it. Was maybe on that in the middle of that uh, run. That was when he's he's run a consecutive games that we're talking about. I yeah. think it was between the twenty seventh of April nineteen seventy two and the thirtieth August seventy five. Uh, one hundred and seventy one matches in a row, which is just it's That's bonking. Cool. And you think of that time as well. I mean, at that time you had you would have had Jock Wallace eventually. Running around right. and doing the sand dunes and all that, you know, and and that's pro. By the way, Sandy Sandy said that on, on countless platforms that that's probably the reason why, you know, that was all in the bank, all that fitness mm-hmm. training for, for big job and stuff like that. And he he obviously seen that as well. Oh, I've never missed a hundred, I've never missed a game out of hundred seventy one games. That's right. that's mad to think nowadays players put the like and all the sports science that goes behind it, and oh, you must do this and you must do that. And back then they weren't doing that. No, no. Well, big job was. I think he, he was he was there when Waddle was there, wasn't he? I don't oh. know. If he, and he was always a stickler for the for the fitness stuff. And with good reason. Oh. And it, it just shows you as you say that you don't that sometimes it's just about hard work and, and doing it rather than your sports scientists and gone 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 with the Bayern Munich game, that's what Sandy says that himself that they shot the boat the first half and then the second half Rangers but their fitness, superior fitness showed. Again, probably didn't he, guys like Big Jock, because Big Jock was his assistant, wasn't he? Aye. He really was his assistant, Aye. so probably didn't he, the, the, the fitness that, that Big Jock had instilled in them, you know, with the training, that we then just overpowered Bayern Munich in the end and and, and went to the final in, in Barcelona. But Did you did you get any more uh, comments about the, the final itself that you seen with Sandy talking about? And... I, t- I, I tried... Sandy says that Big Jock went and visited, he, he watched them, he watched them, and uh, he went and he brought back photographs of every single player of their team and basically gave them to whoever they were up against directly in the Rangers team and said, that's your man, told them about them, the right foot or left foot, whatever they, they could do, etc. And he only really watched them the once, the once or twice, it's a, it's a con to Sandy anyway, and he said that, that that's the kind of preparation they had, they couldn't go and they couldn't tap it because of where they came from. They couldn't go and tap into the you know, with hours of footage to watch. You know, it was it was done kind of half the cuff a wee bit. And well, I don't know. You race into a three 0 lead. It must have worked. Well, that's it. And that's it. <laughs> of course, I was reading. I was reading the 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 they had a bit of a moan after it, saying that the supporters, <laughs> the, the manager said that their supporters had, had terrified them. So they had done that, and then that was how they they couldn't perform. So, I've done our right job. That's before we ran on the park. So. <laughs> Must have frightened the shit out of them after that. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so that's their issue. We never done anything wrong at that point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously, after that, we, we, we move on. In, never missed, we say, never missed a single game until August 1975. Performances were acknowledged by Scottish Football Writers Association, who voted them their player of the year. Yep, that's right. I think that was the. I think that was seventy five, and that was also when they stopped uh, ten in a row. Ten. When I nineteen seventy five, and the, the iconic images and, and footage. Uh, Easter Road, the game we stopped it, and Sandy Jardin jumping on Jock Wallace and Jock Wallace carrying him through the park. Like you just, just see that's you know as the team spirit, the bonding, the, the, oh, how important I, I, Sandy was. I don't, 
don't know. Was that was that Ace Road? You say there. I don't know. Was that the game? Was that the game that uh, Greg picks the ball up at the full time whistle and and he's you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that is it. I always remember my dad talking about that, and it, and again, it's like you said, it's there's all these guys. A lot of them have played for us all the way through this run that they've had, like Sandy for for the vast majority of it, and for them to be to have got to that to finally get out of the line and stop it, mm-hmm. and then for mere success it was it was to come, and have for him to be such a big part of it. Such a big part of that, that thing about it is, you see, winning the Writers' Play of the Year. Aye. Well, 75, 76 is the first of Sandy's two trebles. So, you know, you see the success it comes to win a treble. Probably diluted a wee bit in recent years, given how we measure the success of winning a treble nowadays. But certainly back then, we had a strong Celtic team opposing Rangers. We had strong teams through the division, do you know what I mean? To, to, to win it, to win that then is absolutely unbelievable and for Sandy to do it twice, testament again to, to the ability. That's that, definitely, definitely. It's mm-hmm. uh, just a, a, again, it's just a, a key part of, of both teams. It's it's a, it's it's frustrating because it's, it's, as we've said, it's just finding mm-hmm. that information about them. I can't. I, I had done somewhere. I can't remember where I put it. Who we played against in the two cups? But uh, it might have been seventy six. Uh, see one of the. You can think of this. You can edit this bit properly because I'm rambling on now. I'm trying to figure out what I'm talking about next begin. But the. Uh, it was, in the wee hands I was reading. I don't know if you've have you got the big, book of the. My dad has it. The news? Aye, saw the newspaper. Like headlines aye. and articles on it. Aye, right, right, well, right. Bring me back into this bit when I'm about <laughs> to start talking. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it was one of the, 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 I don't know, I'll need to double check if it was 70, I might, I think it was a 76 treble uh, where we, we played Celtic in one of the, the finals. It might not have been, it might have been 78, but it get. Uh, basically, for what I was reading, it was a terrible final. But the, as and it seemed to be a theme throughout it. Didn't matter how the how the game had went or how the team had performed. That in these Lee's news reports, Sandy was one of the ones that was played that played well. Yeah. He always he always he was he always a standout. Even in that game where the form was. Uh, the, the game itself, both teams. It's, he was one of the few that came out of the pass marks. So it, it's again, it's just it's just no surprising when you, well, you start the, looking. Yeah. The seventy five seventy six cup final, a uh, league cup final, the Celtic we played and we we beat them one nothing. Obviously, it's one cup, beat them one nothing. And the seventy five seventy six Scottish Cup final, it was Hearts, and it was three three one. Three one. Aye, I think it was the seventy six. One, it must have been. Cause I'm sure it was one nothing. And right. as I say, they get the the news report I was reading about it um, was just it was just absolutely slated for how it was just a turgid, terrible final. But I, I, I just remember the wee paragraph, and it, it was it was the few three or four players that they said could basically hold their head up, and Sandy was one of them. And it was a, it was a running theme that he, he would when they were taught about who's who's playing well. During, uh, during these, these it was, it's obviously that that book. It's all the big games in it. It's the it's the big moments, Aye. and it always gets mentioned. Always, if, 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 if it was it was just a running theme all the way through it. I think as well going into the the, the setting treble, the seventy seven seventy eight. I think the signings of Gordon Smith, David Cooper. Who's um, the other one? Bobby Russell. Bobby Russell. That that really kind of pushed the team on because as we said, that team had tennis for the late sixties early 70s, right through the, the, the 70s. Aye. And I think they were probably coming to the end of their time. And in some regards, and they needed a wee bit of, you know, a wee bit of freshness. And I thought, well, obviously, you would see freshness, but you had the magic of David Cooper into the mix. And Bobby Russell was a great player. Gordon Smith as well, who we spoke to on the podcast. And he's, I mean, see, looking some of the footage of him as well. Such an Aye. underrated football player. No, well, it, just, it, I don't, I, I'm... 
it would have been him and Big DJ, I think it was a striker, Gordon Smith, is that right? It was brought in, Gordon Smith said he was a kind of attacking midfielder, again, probably ahead of his time, but Aye. he liked to be the middle of the park, but be the one that was allowed to, to, to roam. But he scored, no, I can't remember the exact figure, but I told, I've spoken, speaking to Gordon Smith about it, but he was only picked, he scored something like 38 goals that season, right? Oh, that's it, I think DJ scored DJ. 40, I think. Aye. Aye. And, and, but I knew, that's, that's uh, I was asking, because I knew that he, he'd, put his, his fair contribution to it. And I'd, God knows how many of the goals were put on by Sandy as well. Exactly. Or, or even him, Sandy starting at the start half, giving the ball to Tommy McLean or whoever it was that was playing in front of him and, and then it leading the goal, goal for that. He's a, it's, I can't remember what game it was now, actually. It's, it's, it's escaped me, but where he chips the goalie. I think it's a hand and Sandy chips the goalie. And uh, I what? watched that today. What a goal, man. Do you know, the, 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 the composure, they just left it out him in the net. I, can't, I seen it last night and I can't remember what, what game it was because there was that much stuff you're looking at in the it's, to Sandy. I, I seen it today, day, Wigan. It is a tremendous goal. So it is, it's just, it's class, man. Right. It's class. And, is it, and honestly, I, I, I come back to, to to what I was saying earlier. There's just there's just a certain way that, that players for that for the years carry themselves and, and they don't look like they could, they could do it. No. Nude. But, Honestly, you see me see some of the footage of him. And that we'll, we'll go on to, uh, when we go a wee bit further on, there's another couple of goals like that that just personify it, you know? Aye. Aye. It's brilliant, man. Just He's, a great player. He, he, as I said, the, the biggest tribute probably you could pay to somebody is they were a big game player. And no, it probably actually probably does him a disservice because Sandy, I think, so consistent. It, it, it was every game, you know, you said the games that we were, we were poor, Sandy was a standout. But mm-hmm. the big games, Celtic Cup finals, Sandy was, you know, you, you could actually see it. You know, the goals he scored were frightening sometimes for a fullback. A striker would be proud of some of the finishes that, that Sandy had. Was he, uh, there's quite a bit of footage of him hitting penalties as well. Aye. Uh, regular penalty taken at one point as well. I didn't get the start, you know, and I was meant to get it because one of the boys I worked with, his, he's helped me a lot with some of the with some of the stats and stuff and, and that and and he actually says to me that he does he isn't sure if Sandy actually missed a penalty. He's, he's not sure. I think he's only he, did he score one goal for Scotland. Aye, I think that was that, a penalty. Well, aye. aye. Uh, I'm not sure who that was that was against. But we've not even mentioned the. I think maybe you were planning to go and apologise if you were big man, but we've not even mentioned. Um, the 74 World Cup and the, I think he played at 78 as well where him and, him and Danny McGrain were basically 74 in particular I think they were the two fullbacks of the, the tournament was, was that the World Cup we were unbeaten? unbeaten aye uh, Brazil Yugoslavia I was just reading it this morning it's some weird nation though isn't it the last one it's some Zaire aye Zaire it was aye, aye. and uh, I would I think uh, let's, let's just Caught it, uh, speak about uh, Nandy Robertson and Kieran Tierney why he was at right back because he was a, the better player <laughs> Danny McGrain says that himself Danny McGrain says when I come into the Scotland team I get shifted to left back because Sandy was a better player than me well uh, yeah, that's where horses move moved so we're not being biased at all no and I think yeah. I was right as much as he was a great player a great full back but I think uh, you're right in terms of the Kieran Tierney and Andy Robertson thing you're playing there because he's better than you in the actual position that you're supposed to be in so Aye. tough but uh, no, for Scotland, as, as you rightly say, I, I, was it 30 odd caps he got? 38. 38, 38 nearly 40 caps. caps. That's, again, what a hole that is as well. As, I mean, there's, there's, I don't, I wouldn't, there's not as many games back then. I think people think a lot of the time, well, I think David Cooper only got 20 odds or something, which isn't, it, which isn't enough, aye. But mm. I don't think there was as many internationals, was there really? In the no. first, so that, that probably has a lot to do with it. So 38's thingy, but again, it probably still isn't enough for a guy who has calibre. I'm not sure when his last cap was, but I dare say it probably wasn't. He, it was a few years before he, he chucked it, and, and by all accounts, he probably could have kept, kept playing. And, and again, that. probably jump on, but I, I, well, no, probably certainly jump on, but testament to the, to the man that he was willing to risk that, because he's in the Hall of Fame for the SFA, mm-hmm. and willing to risk all that, for 
ultimately in protest at the treatment of the club or how he perceived to be the, the treatment of the club, poor treatment of the club. And Sandy was willing to he actually risk that in 2012 to say, I don't care if you take me out of your Hall of Fame, what you're doing to Rangers is wrong. And again, putting the, the club before he's in interest. And I think as, as researching, you'll probably find it as well, researching stuff on Sandy on and off the field through, the, through this for doing this, it's a recurring theme that Sandy put others above himself and put the club first and foremost. I totally, and you were talking about, well, I was talking about the the treble winning team in 78. The, I can't even remember, just that I'm, as I measured the man and, and a flowing for what you said there about him putting, him, putting others above himself. The the 78 League Cup final, I can't even remember who it was against. I read it uh, yesterday and I forgot. But Bobby Russell, I think he played for, I think Rangers signed him for Shettles and Juniors. I did. So that's him just coming in his first cup final. He played all the way through that run, and he was he was injured uh, for the or he had the, I think he had actually had the flu. It was recovering for for the final, so he missed it. So obviously Rangers won it, and Sandy gave him his medal. Over Russell. So it, it's it's just it, it it doesn't surprise you. No. It, it really doesn't. And that's what you keep. Keep hearing just the measure of the man, and that that's exactly it. That's him personified, class personified. Aye. Aye. A, a brilliant gesture. Also, getting into the, the 80s, uh, well, John Gregg obviously tenor at the club, and I don't know if yeah, we weren't there around, so maybe other Rangers fans that are older than us can help us out. But John Gregg taking over was John Gregg maybe too loyal to some of the, the players that he'd played with? Maybe he should have freshened it up a wee bit. I don't know. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, I suppose. But Sandy it's, was it's, certainly a mainstay for him. Oh, I definitely. But it's it's also hard when you're you're just coming in and the team's just won a treble. You know, yeah. it's, it's hard not to not you, 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 you would think as well if you lost. It, I mean, if it went the same way and and, and Gregor came in and totally changed the team a bit, you've done and say, well, why did you change the team that won the treble the year before? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but I th- and and speaking to Gordon Smith on this, DJ. Moved to centre half or moved to sweeper, so you're taking forty odd goals out of the team, aye, and no replacing that. You you take forty goals out of any team. You take with Messi, you take Messi out of Barcelona with the goals that he scores every year. They're going to struggle. Do you know what I mean? Aye. So you put DJ back there, then the burden kind of fell on other people. And Sandy obviously chipped in. Gordon Smith, I say, I think Gordon Smith got something like eighteen that season, which for a midfielder is still a really really decent return. Aye, but. Uh, you know, there was the things there that I think maybe if Greg had maybe try to replace John uh, Derek Johnson, then plus you need to replace Greg himself. Well, that's it, and, I, and I th- but I think the you you maybe be able to avoid turning a wee bit more. I think we really by all accounts, I think we should have won the league that year. So we almost should have won the treble. I think we 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 made an asset four two against Celtic, a rearranged game at Parkhead. And I think I th- I think I might be wrong, but I think Colin Jackson scored an own goal. I think McCloy punched it off his head and it ended up in his net or something. Oh god! And th- and that that ultimately cost us the, the league championship. And it was a Monday night, we, apparently. Because we don't we we won the the two cups. I'm sure it, it, I've got doing that Sandy won the, the Scottish in the league cup in '79. So, but it just shows you, and it could have been it could be so so much different for for Big Greg, you know. Fine lines That's it. to winning a title. Did you know, he, the one thing that we that, that you, you'll know that yourself that, that he, he did do pretty well with uh, Big Greg, I think, was his European. Aye. Well, obviously, PSV in that, uh, some big results. And I dread that he, he would play him quite frequently. Greg would play Sandy as a sweeper away in Europe and for spe- specific games at home. Uh, just like domestic fixtures, just it just underlines his, his versatility Aye. and the job that he could do. And the trust that, that John Craig had on him that he could game a role that's maybe not suited to him, but Sandy's just still done it with distinction as he always did. But I mean, going to that, touching that PSV one, I think the PSV one, I'm sure the players in that were, were in a pub or they were in somewhere with journalists at the time. And the journalists at the time had said to them, That's your Europe. Because they obviously the game at Ibrox, you're out. Aye. And, and the Rangers players and John Gregg, they're like, no, you can't even think that. They hadn't even been beat at home in something like 
is it two or three years or something like that they hadn't been beat at home? You know, I, so don't think, I don't think they'd have ever been beat in Europe. The competition at home either. That you might be right, that might just be their their, their run going up to that point, but I don't think they'd be at home. As again, we're we're looking at the, the older bears here to I apologise if we've anything wrong, but uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty. But no, it's it, it is it's it's just a it's it, I'm no surprised uh, again to the people that are involved that these they, these and yeah, that's when you come back to Sandy that, that so many of these guys what they had won for us and what they'd done for us that that they're the ones to do it. But it was coming to an end. Aye, it was and. I think I, I talking to some people for that era, I, the privilege of doing this and actually being able to talk to some players for that era, era and, that, and also Jim Hanna, the, the Sandy I think was pretty miffed, shall we say, that John Gregg didn't give him the captaincy when Gregg moved into the manager's office and he gave it to, to DJ first DJ. and then obviously Ali Dawson I think took it. But I, I think he can, I, Sandy had filled in for Gregg as vice captain whenever he wasn't playing. I don't know why that that is. I don't know why that that happened like that. Maybe just it, again, there's a rumor that DJ and this could be completely wrong, but DJ apparently went to them and said, went to John Gregg and said, "Well, I'm chucking it if you don't give me the captaincy." And that was after scoring forty odd goals and winning the treble, you know. And Greg apparently said, "Well, he's given the captaincy." I don't know if that's true or no, but it's certainly a rumour that's going around. And I've put the feelers out to try and get Derek Johnson on the podcast to ask him questions like that because the man's a legend, you know what I mean? And it'd be great to it'd be great to chat to him. But Sandy, in my opinion, was the man well, that should have took it. There's only one candidate in there. Aye. I, mean, I I've never really actually gave it a thought about who took over Faye Greg, obviously when he took the manager's job. I think if somebody, had, if before I'd done all this and I'd heard that, because like, you've, you've let me hear the one with Jim, before I'd, I'd done all that, I think I would have just assumed it was it was Sandy Jarden. <laughs> and I was surprised. To, I was surprised to hear that it wasn't he. for all the, the for all the DJ is. You know? I would have. I would have. I would have said and I would have argued it's had to be Sandy Jarden. It's not oh, me other candidate for it. And no taking away from any other players that we had because also we had great players at that time. But Sandy Jarden was, had to be the the, the the captain in my opinion. But Greg obviously gave it to, to DJ and I think that rankled with Sandy a wee bit going forward and then obviously he got the chance with his pal Alex McDonald to go to to go to Hearts Aye. and probably and Sandy says sell give him an Indian summer a wee bit it allowed him to play long and he you know I don't know what he said 11 of God games you know well he, I think he played for Hearts Bear in mind, he played 674 games for us, and then he went to Hearts, and he ended up playing, I think it was like 187, 87 games, another, if he, if he gone in at 33, and then winning, was he 37 by the time he won the the, the Scottish Football Writers Player of the Year again? I, th- I think so, I think that was the age it was, I think. He, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I read as well, John Robertson, Talking about him and about the, I, th- I think Hearts had get had get relegated the season he went, yeah, and he basically uh, he credited Sandy and probably Dodie and all, but instilling a, a a bit of professionalism into the club, and obviously they went right back up, and they should have they should have won should have won the league in eighty six, they should have last day. And then get beat the Scottish Cup final the week after as well. I've seen that three nine against Aberdeen. So that's terrible. I've remembered the the Hearts <laughs> final. And I forgot who we played in, in the ones in the seventies. Murder man. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard looking back because you see people doing this in the future. And, and don't get me wrong, I don't think there'll ever be somebody who's maybe younger that wants to do a Rangers podcast that would particularly focus for two thousand and twelve to the, maybe two thousand eighteen to when Stevie G came in, but. I mean, you'll be able to get footage he's playing at the, the, the ball in the hedge, do you know what I mean? At the breaking and stuff like that. For actually when we go back to winning, and it, do you know, it's, it's actually a strange point because who was it that was saying it? It was Stephen Miller that was saying it on the David Mason podcast, which was released today. I didn't realise this, but, but years ago, winning things like the Scottish Cup and the League Cup, etc., you didn't get to, to go out and parade it. 
you know, it was handed over to a manager and a chairman in a in a wee room. You know, so, so guys like Sandy, when they won the cup, they probably changed that. And I think it was John Gregg at Rangers. I think when we won the Scottish Cup, I think it was... So late 60s, early 70s, I kind of mind. But John Gregg was one of the first to come out and they'd done a lap on her in the park. And that was really the first time it had been done. So did they know, did they know go up on the, the podium and like that? No? no, I think later on, aye. But I think in the 60s, leading into that. Mm-hmm. You know, late 60s, that, that was the really a thing. I think it was, I think it was thingies. And David Mason tells us that as well, actually. He says that the first time he, he really seen Rangers lift a cup was one of the finals, and he always remembers John Gregg running around the track and showing the fans the cup. But I always thought that it's like you, the podium, it, it, you can up the steps at Hamden and, and you lift the cup. And, ah. You know, but apparently that wasn't a huge, because you see the things Eric Caldo's got the cup and that on his own shoulders. And, you know, and I always thought that was a thing, but apparently that wasn't a, an actual tradition that happened. So for guys like Sandy, I think changed that. Definitely, aye. Definitely. That's, 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 the mad, that's the mad thing about it. But obviously, went to Hearts. We bit side track, but it went to Hearts. Um, football Rights Player of the Year. Well, before you go into Hearts, there was a, I think it was it was eighty uh, one. You might have seen it as well. Just to just to point it out, somebody that's not seen it. It scored. We beat Kamarnock eight one. Have you seen that goal? I don't. I don't. I'd need to see it again to see if I have. I don't know. I think it's right for the, the second half kick off, and the ball gets put out to him. And he plays just two wee triangles, one boom, pass and move, two one twos, and he just drives in. And uh, the keeper gives him a bit of help. He hits it, he'd left fit again. <laughs> and, uh, and the keeper just it spills out into his thingy. But it's just a class, just a pass and move. It's just class, man. Just uh, position it right back, right through, drives into the middle and, and puts it in the net. It's just a great goal. Uh, so just to, to point that out. Cause, oh, actually, you've just reminded me as well, because saying come on and stuff, because... Sandy, I think, I'm sure it was I watched Sandy talking about it, and he said that when they were doing the whole running up and doing the sand dunes and stuff like that, at Glen, the big jock when he first took over, but certainly when he was first involved in that side of things, all the times, because Sandy and all the guys at that time were fit athletes playing for Rangers, so they were a better standard than some of the clubs below them, obviously. And when big jock had done it before, Rangers players were beaten eight times really, really easily, because as I say, they were athletes. So Big Jock gave them the medicine balls and says, right, go and do it now. He says, and see getting handed that, he says, and you're like that, going, oh no, he said, I've just ran up and done that, going to the first post back, second post, then back to the first post, then back. He said, you just you thought you were getting there and then you were you were handed this medicine ball. But again, going back to the point that we've said, the games that he played, how long he played into his career, and towards the twilight of his career, sorry, that's probably, oh, that probably helped Sandy in the long run. Totally. I mean, you you could you could I don't know who replaced him at Ibrox, but uh, when he when he left, but I dare say Rangers probably probably looked at it and went, you you could have get a few more years out of him. Whether Rangers would rather he would have kept playing after that, but it's just it's 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 no surprising. It's, for for Macy this time, he's he's playing, he's still playing, Sandy. Yeah. So, and I I watched a thing talking about Craig Levine and just talk about the basically the, the, the reassuring presence that he was on the park for just a guy. To mention that. And uh, and how much he benefited benefited to it. We've already spoken about about John Robertson talking about it. And I, I, I guarantee if you were to speak to any of the Hearts players, if any of the Rangers players that he played with uh, about the influence that, that, that Sandy would have had on them, for sure. He's just, I don't know, I, I seen that Craig Levine thing and Craig Levine saying that Sandy was the one that just steadied him through it and just told him when to be, told him when to sit, told him when to go, told him when to dive in and no dive in, etc. And that's, you can't buy that surely as a young player, you know, you have a guy like that. And even, I mean, you hear of the, the games that the, the, the old Rangers players played against staff, etc. at the time. John Gregg was even like that, I think, as well. There's a few out there that say that when they played centre half with John Gregg, John Gregg would do the same thing sit, hold, whatever and Sandy was in that mould of guiding a youngster obviously through the game and well, Craig Levine by all accounts played that. I can't say I've watched much of Craig Levine playing for but by all accounts are decent centre half so Well he says he says as well about um, he, he, he says about him um, doing all he's running for him Aye. so that suggests to me or not as again no seen much footage that suggests to me or not that 
that Sandy adapted as he was getting older and obviously adapted really well yeah. to, to what he had to do for, for his age at that point. Well, some of the Hearts players said as well, that I think it was John Robertson, that they had never shown up to training with a collar and tie. They'd never, you know, there was no standards like that set. And when Sandy came in there, it was a big part of saying, right, no, this is the way you behave, this is how you conduct yourself, this is how you dress, etc. And it became a thing that the Hearts players, I think, ridiculed at the start and said, there's a point in this, there's a point in that. But then I think they quickly realised that it made you feel like a football player, it made you feel different to the opposition. Right. You show up, they're showing up in trackies, we're showing up, or the Hearts at that time are showing up in their suit, etc. It gives you that wee mental thing, you go, fuck, they're a good team, by the way, look there, they look professional. And it's that psychological thing right for the start that you must, you, you, it's so... You know, it's so underestimated how important well, that is. It's about it's about feeling without letting it go the other way and it turned into arrogance and and, uh, and unfounded, unfounded confidence that you you feel like you're I would imagine it would make you like uh, we are better than them. Uh, you know, just just that, just as you say that, that how much mentally that it thinks and it must have because they've went for they within two or three seasons if we, I think the, I don't know if it was the first season when they get promoted because they get promoted right back up but they were playing I think they went and ended up playing in Europe or they qualified for Europe and then obviously 86 should really have won the league at least if not a, a league and cup double Aye. Aye. He, he says as well he turned the players to the Sand Dunes as well he turned the Hearts players to the Sand Dunes as well and, and done what Big Jock done to them and that's Again, you know, you think you, they wee things that you pass on down the line. It's mm-hmm. just, it, it's, it's what keeps a club going. It's the tr- and I suppose although this this episode of this series about Sandy is about the playing side of it, but I think you need to touch upon what he did as well off the park in the sense of Sandy was the one that was huge on keeping our traditions going. I mean, and making sure that these standards were maintained. Because when you get guys coming in, and Ger- even taking the tradition, Gerard said itself, Gerard, if it's probably any other club, would maybe adopt the the, 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 the tracky thing, mm-hmm. you know, and it, like you see more. I mean, Pep goes as if he's going to dancing. Do you know what I mean? So Aye. to have to, to have then him adopt that. Sandy's part of that still, even though he's not here and upholding the traditions. Well, the the you spoke you spoke a wee bit to, about it to to Jim about them being the guy that brings the players in Aye. when they arrive in the signings and that sorts them out. Uh, and just the, the the way who he was as a person, he was just a, he was just basically the perfect guy for that. I always remember, I remember seeing pictures when uh, Le Guin, see when Le Guin left, mm-hmm. I but it was the pictures and it was it was Sandy. He must have obviously been the man that sorted them out for him. It was the uh, leaving, you know, uh, whatever it was, and it was him coming out of wherever he was staying. Uh, so even in a situation like that, you could, you probably couldn't get a better guy. I can oh, only, sure. I can only imagine the way it would have been. It would have treated uh, Le Guin even at that point. It would have no reason, not to, but it would have still, regardless, uh, it would have treated him with the utmost uh, dignity and and class that he has served them all the way through the time he was at Ibrox. Oh, and yeah. and and I'm, I'm pretty sure if Paul Le Guin was was never to be asked about. He might have some things to say about some people here, but I'm pretty sure he would have nothing to say bad about Sandy Jarden. And um, he'll nobody the only one. It's just it was a perfect as you say, a perfect guy to have in that capacity in the club and to show to show these the, the people coming in but why it's so why it's so important to do your history and our traditions. Mm-hmm. And he's he, he, having him about the place as well, I mean he was the when a young foreigner say come over he was the point of call. He was the man that sorted out a flat. He was the man that sorted out a car. He looked after so many people at that club. And even going into 2012, I think he just threw an arm around the full club, to be quite honest with you. And I went in and fought the battles against the people that, that we didn't like to see at the club. And it's just how... And they say, you know, cancer side and stuff like that, and, and stress, as, as Jim Han alluded to as well. But did that, did that lead to... Sandy becoming ill, you know, it'd be sad if that's the case, that really, they guys couldn't take their club away from us in 2012, but they might have played a hand 
and actually helping to take away some of the guys. It's that one of the guys that you know we hold, we hold in such high esteem, and, and somebody who who should never be forgotten and, and stand in the stand the Jordan stand. Now, thankfully, we've got in the bus that, that he's got in the marble staircase. That will never be the case. But I just I feel better about that. You know, think, thinking that way, and I, and I, I, it's just the way I feel. That I, I just think that's that's wrong. That these guys might possibly have played a hand in stressing that much that that Sandy led to becoming ill. No, it's you're you're totally right. It's I think big big Greg. He uh, he left, didn't he? He left Aye. when when, um, when it all started to the shit started to hit the fan with with Craig White and to be honest we probably should have I don't think anybody took that as a warning No, when we really should have to be honest with you I think we never really looked into that as much as we should have but the the other side of it is you've got Sandy there who stayed and done what he could free within Ibrox mm-hmm. and I can know you, you, you know exactly what they've been doing they've been fighting our corner at every, at every point and we heard a wee bit of that about uh, as, as you spoke, as I'm not to give too much away for the one we jumped, I was was telling you about where he he, he speaks about that and about him. He just his determination to, to get us to where we are now. And it's sad, as you say, that he never he never got to see his back. We're not quite there yet, mm-hmm. but we're certainly we're on a we're on a, a a far better place than we were then. Well, so, I think when we do go up to to get that 55, the trophy for 55, and Hopefully it's not too far away. We hear the Champions League music back at Ibrox. I think we owe a lot of that to, to Sandy, despite him not being here. And uh, as you said about the Jim Hanna stuff, it was quite touching to hear him because he's talking about him as a friend. Remember as well, first and foremost, not just a colleague and not just somebody who's helped fight in a battle. But you've got John Gregg, number one all-time appearances for Rangers, top top the greatest ever Ranger voted. Second, you get Dougie Gray, third. Sandy Jardin. So, so for me, we had two of two of our best at, at our club at that time, and it shows you John Gregg obviously felt as though he would be able to make a bigger statement by resigning. But I, I think it showed the measure of Sandy, and I'm not saying it doesn't have John Gregg because obviously John Gregg that had an effect. Probably we were to blame for that, no John. I, we were to blame for that. Exactly, I. But 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 Sandy obviously I think testament to the man turned around and says, no, well, I'm better off inside fighting rather than outside looking in, and I think that just sums up again putting the club. And the fans before himself. No, oh, totally. They, as, I, as I said, somewhere you there that you they both of them made us both made a, 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 a statement in their own way. Yeah. Um, but it does it does totally sum them up. And then as as uh, I don't I, I think you mentioned it earlier on, but it was me and you that went to that march. It was uh, us two together that went to that march to Hamden, and just the the, the perfect guy for it. And I I think the there's no many other guys that could get us to do something like that and do it so well. Yep. Even if it was Sandy Jarden that was yep. asking to do it. And obviously if people listening to the, the Jim Hanna pod, they'll hear that in great depth and some funny stories, <laughs> some some really, really, you know, emotional stories talking about obviously Sandy when he was in the well and stuff, but the the thing of the the March winds are I can't Brilliant, absolutely. And again, I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I'd heard it. So I didn't know no, that. So again, it's, it's so. worth its worth its its weight in gold for that alone. But to have, I think you're right. To have ten thousand show up when Sandy was telling the, the police that it would maybe be five six hundred that showed up. To have roughly ten thousand people showing up to march for Queens Park to Hamden. I mean, you think Sandy and, and Jim Hanna at the front of the line, right? So see when they got to the top of the stairs, the queue of people that were coming round, they must have been there for about fifteen minutes before. Everybody was crammed into that wee car park. Aye. Yes. Well, I remember, I remember us stoning. We were, we thought we were at the back. <laughs> and we're like, right, we'll, we'll probably, this will probably be us. And then you, t- you turn around <laughs> and there's whoever men behind us still. But <laughs> as I say, I'd, you, you, you touch on it a wee bit when you're speaking to, speaking to Jim. There's a, there's, you can talk about about. Uh, I was saying I've, I've probably already mentioned that about the the unity. There's other guys could could ask to do that, and they wouldn't get the same thingy. Yeah. I say about the organisation. I know is what Sandy got. Aye. And for 
that's that's just another reason why it's for out there for for him to support him and what he was trying to do for us as much as we were out to to help the club. Yeah. Ourselves. And I think can us if there's anything else you want to add, then we can add it. But I think you know starting to wrap it up a wee bit. Sandy said at the top of the stairs that day he thanked the fans for being such great ambassadors for, for Rangers Football Club and to be quite honest with you there's no greater way of saying that that's exactly what the man was he probably was the greatest ambassador for Rangers Football Club and I, and I know we have many that that, that you would maybe turn and say oh, but he was as well he was as well for me in my opinion Sandy's the greatest ambassador that the club's ever had and will ever have well I see the way I, I look at it, Scott. When I think back, me and you are 28. Hey, no, I'm saying that you're 29. I'm 29, maybe. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> but me, me and you, we're, we're in our 20s. And see, when I think back to when we were, and I, 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 I hope we've not embarrassed ourselves today with our, our knowledge, but the, the, me, I think you'll agree, me and you, we like to take in as much as we can about, about Rangers' history and, and what's happened. and, and I think we, we back ourselves to know what we're, what we're talking about for a lot of things. But the, see when I think back to being a young boy and, and just growing up and starting to, to learn to, to, to enjoy supporting the club and that, uh, there's four names I think he felt like before that, nine in a row era and maybe even the soonest one. And it's, it's Big Greg, John Greg, Jim Baxter, um, David Cooper and Sandy Jarden. Uh, before before I knew anything really, I knew the four guys, mm-hmm. and I think that just that that says it all. Uh, one one thing that we the the we never we never mentioned was he was in the he's in the, the greatest eleven in there as well. Yep, and, and right or so. I think I think if you were to ask some Rangers supporters when that was done, it was there was a bit of a. Uh, I think it was. I must have been. I think it might have been ninety nine. I'm not sure. But the nine in a row is fresh in everybody's mind. Yeah. I think it maybe dictated how the how the voting might have went. But there's only there's only one guy who's going to play. Right. This is maybe a debate for another podcast, and I think I would like to to do that and go into a greatest eleven mm-hmm. that maybe would be different to to the, what was actually voted. But you you hit it the nail on the head. You can only you can only look back on the players that there's footage of. So I, your guys like David Meikle, John, Sam English, mm-hmm. there's, there's there's an array of players out there that that, that should be in that bracket. That are only because we don't have footage of them, and you can only vote for what you can see. And I, Jeff Holmes, Jeff Holmes touches on it perfectly and sums it up perfect in the in the pod we've done with him. And again, his knowledge is frightening at the club, and I take his word for a lot of things. His books are great, and he says that as well that you can only really vote on players that you. That you can see, right. and John Gregg is the greatest ever Ranger because of that. But you never know; there might have been somebody else out there. Aye, definitely. You know, well, you don't know about this, but we've got a wee montage about Sandy. He's going to finish the pod, no us. So, right. Well, the last thing I'll say is that uh, I asked my dad about about Sandy Jarden, and he's been saying a lot of the things that we are saying. But yeah. the one thing he did tell me was that his cousin, who I think he's he'll be he'll be late forties now. But his cousin, uh, his first words were Sandy Jarden. So <laughs> there you go. And then when he met him, he couldn't. He was speechless. He couldn't see anything. It was too <laughs> so brilliant. Very hanging in a man. But listen, Biggie, thanks very much for, for asking me to do it. No, thanks for coming on. It will not be the last. I done a bit of rabbling. This is my first podcast. <laughs> you know, so I, I probably did a bit of rabbling at, at points, but I hope everybody enjoys it anyway. So you go back to listening to my first, you'll hear eh, ooh, ah, 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 all the time, so don't worry about it. So, um, but it'll nobody be, no be the, the last one then, because we're going to look at maybe players and teams, and as I said, Great eleven probably would be one that would be good today and stuff like that, and, and we'll get back on to doing stuff like that in the future. So, thanks very much. No and I'll, I'll catch up with you soon, all right? Big man, cheers. There's lots of great clubs. But what makes us a wee bit different is we value our history, we value our traditions. We've always had great players, big crowds, and we've always won things.
Johnson. Johnson walking his red field, trying a left foot shot, and it's a good one, and it's there! Beside probably the greatest players that I've ever played for Rangers in Scotland. Do you think that your name's up there and you come in and you can see it and it's there forever? It's, it's fantastic. If I look back at my career and my whole career at Rangers, it's one of the proudest moments. There's huge crowds on the park. Couldn't believe it. And it's hard to see, I think there must have been 8, 10,000 there. We had more at that match than any crowd at Scottish football that day. It was something I was really proud of, you know, just to be involved in. Just a love of the club, a belief in the club. It is a family. That's what makes our club different from other clubs. Integrity, uh, tradition, value in it, standards. We shouldn't lose that. And the biggest thing for me is, I'm proud to be a ranger.